Something that we hear time and time again is the importance of gut health as it relates to overall longevity, hormones, neurotransmitters, and also inflammation. So in today's video, what I want to do is share with you an incredibly exciting compound known as lactoferrin, specifically the FRR version of lactoferrin. Now, this is a particular ingredient that I've been extremely fascinated by because of the benefits that I've seen using colostrum in the past. Now, some of you listening to this video may be familiar with colostrum. I want to zoom in and focus in on lactoferrin, which is found within colostrum. But specifically, we're going to look at a different type of lactoferrin. So first of all, I want to share a little bit about lactoferrin. Now, bear in mind, the reason why I was personally so fascinated by lactoferrin was because I was seeing some pretty cool research on its ability to lower endotoxin. Now, it also has the ability to reduce aromatase from what I've read in some of the in vivo studies, which means that it can actually reduce estrogen and it can also support testosterone production in some of these in vivo studies. That's what caught my attention. Now, specifically, what I want to do is share a very potent form of lactoferrin that you might want to check out. But before we do, what I want to share is lactoferrin is a naturally occurring protein that's found in human milk, saliva, and other bodily secretions. Now, it does bind with iron and plays key roles for immune regulation, iron absorption, and microbial defense. All right, so if you're listening to this and you have iron deficiency, pay attention to lactoferrin because lactoferrin could potentially reverse your iron deficiency if you're struggling with absorption, utilization, and transportation because lactoferrin can support these particular areas. Now, specifically, what we've known about lactoferrin is that it has broad effects and lactoferrin is increasingly being studied and used in supplements and functional foods. Whilst bovine lactoferrin has been widely used for decades, which is what I mentioned before, recombinant human lactoferrin, engineered closely to mimic the version found in breast milk, is now emerging as a next generation ingredient. Now, this is fascinating stuff. This video explores the latest research on human lactoferrin and its effects for gut function, immune balance, women's health, sports, and performance, and overall safety. Now, each section is grounded in clinical or preclinical studies to help separate marketing hype from real biological effects. So first of all, let's look at human versus bovine lactoferrin. What is the difference? Well, lactoferrin is found in high amounts in colostrum, the first milk produced after birth, which is often sold as a standalone supplement for immunity and gut support. However, research suggests that human lactoferrin may be more effective and better tolerated than bovine form commonly found in colostrum products. Now, a 2024 double-blind trial compared bovine lactoferrin with recombinant human lactoferrin branded as Ephera or Ephera over 28 days in healthy adults. Now, all participants consumed up to 3.4 grams daily and researchers tracked immune responses and safety outcomes. Now, the key finding, bovine lactoferrin triggered a marked rise in anti-bovine lactoferrin antibodies, a three-fold increase from baseline. In contrast, recombinant human lactoferrin produced no change in anti-human lactoferrin antibodies even at high dosages. This suggests that human lactoferrin has lower immunogenicity and may be a better tolerated over time, making it a more targeted option for functional food and supplement applications. We'll now review the research on lactoferrin. Importantly, much of this research uses non-human lactoferrin, so potentially future research on human lactoferrin would show even greater effects. So how is Ephera different to other versions of lactoferrin and why is it superior? Now, Ephera is the first human equivalent lactoferrin offering reduced allergenic risk and higher bioavailability compared to bovine lactoferrin. Produced via precision fermentation, it ensures consistent supply, quality, and performance. Now, lactoferrin is unique in its ability to regulate iron levels by binding iron in the gut increasing absorption and distributing iron as needed throughout the body. This actually optimizes iron usage unlike other ingredients like vitamins or polyphenols that either help with absorption or lower iron levels but do not regulate. Lactoferrin is an iron regulator. Listen to this. If you have high levels of iron, lactoferrin can support that, modulating it and bringing it down. If you have low levels of iron, then lactoferrin may help with increasing iron absorption. Maintaining balanced iron levels is absolutely critical as both deficiency and excess 
can negatively affect cognitive function, immune health, and muscle energy, while iron overload can actually lead to serious organ damage. So put it this way, guys. When I had low iron from donating too much blood, I started supplementing with iron. And having looked back now, I regret it, okay? Much rather use lactoferrin over taking iron itself. This is because lactoferrin has a modulating effect. It actually helps with absorption, utilization, transportation around the body. Now I take lactoferrin every single day, literally like a staple, like taurine, tutka, and some other supplements you've heard me talk about as a staple part of my supplement stack. That is how significant and important it is for me, for immune health, iron absorption, utilization, and distribution, and then just overall amazing for gut health. So those three key areas are enough for me to say, I'll keep it in my stack probably for the next 10, 20 years. I don't see myself stopping at all. Now, not all lactoferrin is created equal. So Helena's in vitro digestion studies revealed that ephera survived for a longer period of time than bovine lactoferrin. Now in this study, ephera re remained intact for 10 minutes while the same dosage of bovine lactoferrin was digested immediately after going to the stomach, suggesting lower bioavailability. Now since ephera stays in the system in the body or specifically in the body for a much longer period of time, it is more likely to be absorbed in the gut and exert its benefits in the body. Now, interestingly, what we can see here is that Helena's clinical trials showed that ephera is recognized by the body as a native human lactoferrin. No antibodies were developed like we saw for bovine. They can clear out the protein before it can do its job. Now, when antibodies develop, they can actually clear out the protein before it can actually do its job. So that's important to note. Another interpretation of this is that while the body recognizes bovine LF as exogenous and raises preemptive alarm bells in the form of antibody expression, the body recognizes RHLF as native, coming either from your own body or from another human's like mum's. Human iron receptors are designed to bind to the LF in mum's milk in infancy. HRLF is the first of its kind that offers adults the same opportunity. While the exact function of the anti-bovine LF antibodies was not studied, this is a similar response that occurs with biologics. Over time, people stop seeing efficacy results due to the immune response against the protein. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. What about as it relates to absorbing lactoferrin? There are specific gut receptors that recognize human lactoferrin facilitating its uptake into the bloodstream. This process is crucial for lactoferrin to exert its beneficial effects. Human lactoferrin binds efficiently to these receptors due to its precise structural configuration. However, bovine lactoferrin shares only 70% homology with human lactoferrin, suggesting reduced bioavailability at these receptors. This structural difference impacts the efficiency with which bovine lactoferrin can be absorbed and utilized by the human body. Helena's in vitro digestion studies reveal that ephra survived for a longer period than bovine lactoferrin. In the study, ephra remained intact for 10 minutes, while the same dosage of bovine lactoferrin was digested immediately after going to the stomach. Since ephra stays in the body for longer, it is more likely to be absorbed and exert its benefits. Now, one key point to note is that lactoferrin can actually help to reduce inflammation. Lactoferrin helps support reduced inflammatory responses and protect against oxidative stress, further supporting inflammation reduction. Lactoferrin can sequester iron, depriving harmful bacteria and inflammatory immune cells of a key growth factor, thereby supporting inflammation reduction. In the gut, lactoferrin binds to lipopolysaccharides on bacterial cell walls, damaging harmful bacteria and limiting their growth. At the same time, it promotes the growth of beneficial bacteria that produce metabolites known to reduce inflammation both locally in the gut and systemically throughout the body. Now, what about as it relates to gut health, supporting the gut barrier? Specifically, lactoferrin does help to protect the gut, not just structurally, but also modulating inflammation. In a 2022 study, Hugh and colleagues investigated the effects of lactoferrin in mice exposed to deoxynavenolol 
which is a common gut damaging mycotoxin found in mold. They found that lactoferrin supplementation significantly restored tight junction proteins such as Claudin 1 and Occludin and reduced epithelial damage throughout the small intestine. Now, this study also reported decreased myeloperoxidase activity, indicating reduced neutrophil infiltration and improved villus morphology. These findings suggest lactoferrin protects the gut lining by limiting inflammation and supporting epithelial integrity in the face of chemical insults. This highlights its potential therapeutic value in conditions characterized by gut barrier dysfunction and inflammatory damage. Now, what about how lactoferrin can promote beneficial microbiome growth, specifically looking at how it can increase the abundance of beneficial bacteria? Lactoferrin helps shape the gut microbiome by promoting the growth of beneficial bacteria and suppressing pathogens. In vitro studies have shown that bovine lactoferrin selectively stimulates the growth of probiotic species such as bifidobacteria and lactobacilli while inhibiting harmful strains like E. coli. Clinical research supports these effects. In a 2022 study of pediatric cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy, daily oral supplementation with lactoferrin helped preserve microbial balance and maintain gut flora stability under physiological stress. These microbial effects are likely related to lactoferrin's ability to sequester iron limiting its availability to competing pathogens. Together, the data suggests that lactoferrin can play a protective microbiota supporting role in both health and disease. Now, here are some of Effera's claims related to the microbiome and gut health. Lactoferrin displays antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory activities that display a wide array of functions. Now, specifically, lactoferrin has been shown to have modulatory actions that promote the growth of probiotic strains such as lactobacilli and bifidobacteria and inhibit the growth of detrimental strains in the microbiome. Now, lactoferrin also has been shown to have beneficial effects in the modulation of the vaginal microbiome. Now, there is also considerable evidence for lactoferrin in promoting bifidobacteria and other probiotics in infants and children. This substantial literature provides the basis for claims for beneficial effects of effera on the gut microbiome and on gut health specifically. Now, moving on, let's look at the immune support modulating inflammation. A 2023 meta-analysis by Yami and colleagues reviewed 25 experimental studies evaluating the anti-inflammatory effects of lactoferrin and its derivatives on the NFKB signaling pathway. The authors reported that in both in vitro and in vivo models, lactoferrin significantly reduced levels of key pro-inflammatory cytokines. Specifically, IL-6 levels decreased by an average of 3.24 picograms per milliliter, TNF-alpha by 8.73 picograms per milliliter, and IL-1-beta by 2.21 picograms per milliliter when lactoferrin was administered before lipopolysaccharide exposure. The review also found that lactoferrin suppressed downstream inflammatory signaling by lowering IKK-beta, phosphorylated IKB, and NFKB P65 activity. These results support lactoferrin's role as a modulator of innate immunity and inflammation, particularly through inhibition of the LPS NFKB pathway. As I said before, one of the major benefits of lactoferrin is its ability to regulate iron levels. Ephera does regulate iron levels and human lactoferrin has two iron binding sites, as we can see here, which attract or release iron as needed. It helps release iron stored in cells for better utilization and it binds and helps transport dietary iron throughout cells in the gut for better absorption. So this could be extremely relevant for someone who, let's say you're eating a lot of red meat, right? And you've had a blood test and your iron levels are low and your ferritin's low, but you're like still eating a lot of red meat. This is where lactoferrin might benefit you. You might be someone who has an absorption issue, issue not so much an intake issue. It also binds to and eliminates bad bacteria to keep gut barrier cells healthy and supports lining integrity. It also binds iron away from pathogens. Guys, this is the most important point here. Lactoferrin binds iron away from pathogens, basically increasing good bacteria, inhibiting microbial and microbial infection. Pathogens actually rely upon iron as a food source to grow. So if you have an overgrowth of bad bacteria, it might be feeding off iron. Lactoferrin blocks that and reduces its ability to feed off iron. Here we can see that lactoferrin also activates T cells into Th1 or Th2 to support the body's natural immune defenses and an appropriate balanced immune response. And it also neutralizes inflammatory stimulators and acts as a first line of defense in the immune system 
by binding iron from pathogens. Now, interestingly, lactoferrin actually outperforms iron supplements. Ferrous sulfate, while generally effective, often causes gastrointestinal side effects that reduce adherence to treatment. In a meta-analysis of 11 trials, found that oral lactoferrin significantly improved serum iron, ferritin, and hemoglobin levels compared to ferrous sulfate, but with better tolerability. Participants taking lactoferrin reported fewer digestive issues, likely due to its lower iron load and anti-inflammatory properties. The authors concluded that lactoferrin is a well-tolerated alternative for managing iron deficiency anemia, especially in populations sensitive to traditional iron salts. What about as it relates to the safety of lactoferrin? In a 2024 randomized controlled trial, Peterson et al. tested the safety of recombinant human lactoferrin at 0.34 gram and 3.4 gram daily for 28 days. The study found no increase in anti-human lactoferrin antibodies at either dose, indicating no evidence of immunogenicity. Adverse events were minimal and not clinically significant, with all iron hematologic and safety markers remaining within normal limits. The authors concluded that Ephera is safe and well tolerated with a more favorable immune profile than bovine lactoferrin. These findings support the use of recombinant human lactoferrin as a safe dietary ingredient, even at high intake levels. Now let's move on to the dosages for Ephera lactoferrin. Now these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This is based on bovine studies. 100 milligrams a day, 200 milligrams a day, and 340 milligrams a day. These are the different dosages that were studied. 340 milligrams a day, all of the 100, 200 milligram per day benefits plus it actually helps to maintain iron homeostasis. So look at all these benefits that we can see from the different dosages of lactoferrin, the ferro, and it's clearly a lot of the benefits that I've been talking about. So big, big benefits there. So overall, my final thoughts are that human equivalent lactoferrin, not bovine, represents an exciting step forward in nutritional science. Thanks to advances in precision fermentation, it's now possible to produce a form of lactoferrin that closely matches the protein found in human milk, both in structure and function. Early clinical research suggests that this human equivalent version may be better tolerated and more immunologically compatible than bovine forms. While many of its proposed benefits are still being explored, especially in specific populations like athletes or pregnant women, it is overall very strong. Now, human lactoferrin supports iron balance, gut integrity, and immune regulation in ways that are biologically relevant. For those interested in trying it, this form of lactoferrin called ferra is now available for use in supplements and functional foods via Helena. So thanks everyone for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.